Uh, hey there everyone, just doing a quick review for the Blue 80 EB3A portable power station. Uh, and we're just going to start out by uh, seeing what's included in the box. And so, well, in the back, you got the box for the power station right there. And right here is the AC charging cable, manual, and the warranty card right here. The inclusion of a uh, AC charging cable only is of course minimal because usually these type of power stations come with a AC charging cable, a car charging cable, and a solar cable, but uh, you won't be getting a car charging cable or a solar cable in the box, uh, mainly because that was to keep the price of the unit low. And at the time of making this review, you can get the EB3A power station for about 240 on Amazon right now with a coupon included on the site. The Blue Eddy EB3A portable power station has a 268 watt hour power capacity with a 600 watt continuous power output and a 1200 watt surge output. And it's all pure sine wave as well. The unit itself is pretty small with a 10 by 7 by 7 form factor and the unit weighs 10 pounds. And when it comes to actually using the unit, uh, you're mainly going to be just looking at the front of the unit right here and possibly at the top because at the top you do get a wire oh, you do get a wireless charging pad at the top and the handle. Other than that, just, uh, twisting it around like that, there is a vent right there, nothing at the back, and a vent right there because the unit has a internal fan. Yeah, at the bottom there are just pads for the unit right there. And taking a look at the front, you do get a DC cigarette lighter port, two DC 5521 ports right there, a DC input port, the AC input port, a circuit protector button right there, uh, two USB-A uh, ports, a 100 watt USB-C power delivery port, which is really useful, and of course the two AC outlets and a LED flashlight right there. And taking a look at how the un unit works, you got this incredibly helpful screen right here, which is just a lot better than what Bluetooth has made in the past. And just to turn on the unit, to press a button, any of these buttons really once. And currently on the screen right now, you have the input wattage and the output wattage input of course means uh, input into the power station and output means how much the power station is outputting to uh, appliances oh, and uh, devices that you are charging or powering uh, the power capacity right there is 43 percent and this right here under the power capacity is the usage time that you have remaining and since we're not using the unit right now it says 30 hours um yeah <laughs> that of course changes as you use the power station and when it comes to using like each of the sections of the power station, they each have their own button. So if you want to activate the AC outlets, you have to press the AC outlet button like that. This light turns green and also shows up on the screen right there. So AC is on right there. If you want to turn the, on the DC section, right there, it's green and DC is right there. And also the LED flashlight, it doesn't show up on the screen actually when I turn it on but uh, it does have an output reading right there. And the flashlight has a low setting, a high setting, and a SOS mode. And since the unit is at 43%, let's go ahead and start charging it. Let's see how the charging works. And uh, because the charging is actually pretty interesting, you can actually use the Bluity app to recharge this unit faster. Let's take a closer look at that. All right, and here we are with recharging the unit via the AC charging cable that's included in the box with the unit. And right here, as you can see, the default recharge speed for the unit is 250 watts. Well, about 250 watts right now, it's at like 265 uh, changes. And the, the great thing about this is that you can change the charging speed through the Blue Eddy app, which is right here. I'm on Android right now and launching it like that. You can press connect. You don't have to create a account with Bluetooth. You go to connect. You make sure you have your Bluetooth uh, on on your phone. Tap the uh, power station right there. You just have to make sure that the power station itself is on so it can show up on the app and successfully connected right there. 
and right here, right there, oh, turn the screen off. And you can see the input right there, real time, output real time, and everything real time, uh, technically. And from the app, you can go to settings right there. Right now, the uh, recharge rate is set to standard. We can change that to two other settings, which is turbo. Yep, there we go, there's a little warning right there. So this increases the recharge rate of the power station to 350 watts, from 250 to about 350, which is a lot faster. And of course you see the recharge time right next to the power capacity uh, percentage. That's, that's awesome. Of course, uh, I don't recommend uh, using this always, and Blue Eddy themselves don't recommend always using turbo uh, recharging because it does wear out the batteries a lot faster. And another setting on the app for recharging is silent mode. And silent mode basically uh, doesn't make the fan run because um, the fan does run per periodically uh, when you're recharging it on either standard or turbo, turbo uh, but it does not run on silent mode because the wattage is so low. Of course, the negative of silent mode is that it recharges the unit at only 100 watts. Also, uh, while you're recharging the unit, this uh, power station does act as a uninterrupted power supply. And you can see that right there, it appears on the screen, which means that you can have a appliance plugged in while the unit's charging and it'll be powered from the wall outlet, not the power station itself. And uh, as long as the, as the appliance that you're powering is uh, within 600 watts, if the power goes out, the appliance can be powered directly from the uh, power station and not the wall outlet because of course there's no power coming through during a power outage. And also because I just remembered, uh, I do have a solar panel to uh, test out solar recharging. So let's go uh, check that out. All right, and we're outside with the Fantec 100 watt solar panel. Let's go ahead and take a look at how fast the EB3A power station is recharging. Uh, oh, screen's off. Okay. I know you can't see it that well, but the unit is recharging at 84 watts. Um, and you can use up to a 200 watt solar panel because the solar input on this power station maxes out at 200 watts. Not that bad. Of course, I think the best uh, recharging option is gonna be uh, using the AC charging cable, but this is also an option. And let's head on back inside to uh, see how you can use the power station uh with the charging ports and the ac ports all right you guys we're back inside uh we're gonna test out the charging right here and right now we've got a galaxy note 9 charging from one of the usb a ports and a galaxy a51 charging from one of the other usb a ports and we're about to start charging a lenovo laptop right here from the 100 100 watt USB-C power delivery port. Pop that in right there. And as you can see, the charging changes real time. And we're outputting about 40 watts. And we're also gonna place a LG G7 on the wireless charging pad at the top of the power station. Bam. Starts wireless charging right there. Fast wireless charging. It's pretty good. All right, uh, charging is no problem for the device. With the 100 watt USB-C power delivery port, you can uh, charge most USB-C chargeable laptops, and that includes MacBooks as well that charge via USB-C. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at the AC outlets to see how they fare with powering appliances. All right, you guys, uh, before we get into testing out appliances with the uh, power station, I do want to mention a few other features included with the Blue Eddy app. And here we are at the uh, main screen, basically. Head over to settings. And uh, we already um, went over the uh, recharging options and we're gonna cover eco mode right here. If you turn on eco mode right there, it turns on on the app and it also turns on with the screen right there. And what eco mode does is that it can automatically turn off the power station 
if the AC output is below 20 watts. And you can actually put a timer all the way up to four hours from one hour. And, um, you know, if you're not using that much power from the power station, you can just have it turn off. Um, if it's less than 20 watts, that is. And uh, you can also remotely control the LED flashlight from the power station. So we're just going to go ahead and put it on high right there. And you can put it on medium SOS mode and turn off right there. And there's also a feature called power lifting mode on the power station. And what this does is actually lets the power station output 1200 watts over the 600 watt max output. Um, however, you are not supposed to power refrigerators or air conditioners with this mode on. Otherwise, you can damage the unit and damage the uh, appliance um, that you're powering from the uh, power station. So you've been warned, all right, okay. And actually what powerlifting mode does is it decreases voltage and it increases amperage and makes the appliance that you're powering um, from the power station think that it's receiving enough power. And of course we have firmware upgrades. All right, let's get into actually using the power station now. All right, so with our first uh, appliance test, we're gonna be testing out a heat gun right here. And we have powerlifting mode off for now. So let's just see how it goes. All right, and we're gonna just go ahead and set the heat gun to medium. Oh, it's going on. All right, so we're good for now. About 300 watts. Now we're gonna set it to high. All right, yeah, so after it like spent a few seconds, over 600 watts, the power station automatically turned off. That was expected. And let's go ahead and test out power lifting mode with the heat gun. All right, and now with this test, we do have power lifting mode on, and we're gonna go ahead and test the heat gun again. Got it at medium right now. Now we have a high. All right, there we go. So power lifting mode does a pretty good job uh, changing the voltages and the amperage in order to run appliances. They probably don't run at their like peak amount, but they are able to run like over the 600 watt max output of the Bluity EB3A power station, which is pretty incredible. I definitely think other power stations should have this feature because it pushes what the power station is capable of normally. All right, guys, so we have a Ninja professional food processor Rated at 850 watts, clearly over the 600 watt max output of the uh, Blue Eddy power station, but we're gonna turn it on and see what happens. Uh, we're gonna set it to high first. I mean, set it to low, not high, low first, all right. All right, rain on low. That was pretty cool. All right, let's try it out high. Let's see what happens. high as well that's actually pretty incredible clearly the 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 power station didn't reflect the um actual output though i mean the, the food process is rated at 850 watts so definitely something going on there but let's keep on moving to other appliances to see what else this thing is capable of that's pretty cool
All right, you guys, next appliance that we're testing out is the Alasco heater. And we do not have power lifting mode turned on right now. So we're just gonna turn it on to see what happens with the heater on low first. Let's try low. Oh, okay, so yeah, clearly went over 600 watts and the power station automatically turned off. Uh, now let's try out power lifting mode turned on. Okay, and we're back with the heater and powerlifting mode is turned on. We're gonna turn on the heater and see what happens. Just put it back to low. Seriously, okay. Wow, okay, there we go. That's powerlifting mode for you. Is actually able to run the heater. Check, Let's check high. Should we go to high? Let's check high. Let's see what happens. Oof. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't recommend running a heater at high. Heater's barely. Um, well, it's pulling out hot air, but it's not pulling out much hot air. Set it back to low. Yeah, low is a lot better. Power station is able to keep up with the heater a lot better at um, its low setting when uh, power lifting mode is on. All right, there we go. Let's test out another appliance. All right, you guys, uh, we are here testing out a crock pot. I've got it set to high and the power station is outputting 250 watts. I think the crock pot itself is rated for 240 watts. So same thing practically. Uh, so if you wanted to serve food or keep food um, warm outside, uh, you can get it done but with the uh, Liddy power station. And let's go ahead and test out um, another appliance, probably just one more appliance and wrap this up. All right, you guys, so we're just back uh, doing a final test with the Blue Eddy EB3A portable power station. Currently got the fan being powered and the TV being powered from the power station. Also got two phones charging from the USB-A ports, one phone wireless charging at the top, and a laptop charging from the USB-C port. And uh, this test was really just to demonstrate how well the power station is able to charge and power multiple devices at the same time because this is really where the unit unit um, excels at because uh, even if you have the power capacity charged up all the way at uh, 200, 268 watt hours, you can still only power a uh, 268 watt appliance for one hour, whereas you can power a one watt light bulb for 268 hours. So yeah, I mean, currently we've got a 155 watt output. Um, this wasn't really to uh, show, this wasn't really meant to be a uh, heavy power usage, usage test, really just to show that the power station excels the most at charging and powering multiple devices at the same time. All right, and that is the review for the Bloody EB3A portable power station. And I also forgot to mention that this power station does use a lithium iron phosphate battery. And Bloody claims that this gives the power station 2,500 plus charge cycles. And within that 2500 plus charge cycle range, the battery still maintains 80% of its original battery capacity, which is great for long-term usability. There we have it. Uh, let me know um, if you guys like this review, what I did well, what I didn't, what I didn't do so well on. And uh, I'll also include a link to the product in the description, as well as a link to the written review uh, for this unit. All right, you guys have a nice day. Goodbye.